In this video, I am going to be solving a very uh, difficult and lengthy mensuration question. And this, by the way, is a past paper question. And this is from May, June 2016, paper 2, variant 2. Okay, so now the reason why I've said difficult is because this does not just involve the formula. Uh, it also involves a lot of algebraic manipulation. And trust me, uh, the thing with difficult mensuration questions is that they're either... Uh, it's either a combination of mensuration along with trigonometry or uh, it's a combination of mensuration along with some intense algebra. So that's that's exactly what we're going to deal with right now. So it says solid one is a cylinder with a small cylinder removed from its center as shown in the diagram. The height of each cylinder is 20 centimeter and the radius of the small cylinder is r centimeter. The radius of the large cylinder is 3.5 centimeter greater than the radius of the small cylinder. Okay. The volume of solid one is 3000 centimeter cube. Okay, so again, never ever have a head on approach with a question where there's so much detail that's been given to you. So what you gotta do first is what you gotta, a lot of you ask for a paper two tip. So this is one very important tip that I'm giving you guys right now. So what you gotta do first is you gotta break the information down, get yourself familiar with what you're given and then sort of plan your journey towards getting the final answer, which in this case is the radius of the small cylinder. So you have a big cylinder from it you're removing a small cylinder and whatever is left now the shape that's left is not going to be a cylinder it's going to be a cylinder with a cylinder removed from it so we can't really have a specific formula for whatever is left over i can't say okay so here's a formula for the leftover shape you know use this formula and get your answer it doesn't work like that so whatever is left is basically this shape that you see right here and if you want to find out the volume of this solid here's how you're going to do it First, you're gonna find out the volume of the entire cylinder with radius r plus 3.5. I'll show you that in a minute. And then from it, you're gonna subtract the volume of the cylinder that has been removed. That is how you're gonna to get to the final answer, uh, which is, which that is what will give you the volume of the solid, which is 3000. Okay, so let's get straight to it. So what, what have we decided so far? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do pi r square h. Okay, capital R signifies that I'm gonna be using the larger radius minus pi r square h. So lowercase r signifies that I'm gonna be using the radius of the small cylinder, okay. And this is gonna give me the volume of solid one, which is basically equal to 3000, all right? Now, the question is that what exactly is the radius of the larger cylinder equal to? So the radius of the larger cylinder is gonna be this entire length, okay? Let me just darken it up a little. So it's gonna be all of this so this or the other way around okay so this is going to be r plus 3.5 all right so it's going to be r till here and then another 3.5 so that means r plus 3.5 okay so that means pi into r plus 3.5 the whole thing squared okay times h which is 20 now the height is the same for both the cylinders minus pi r square times 20 is equals to 3000. Now, as I said at the very beginning that this requires a lot of, uh, I mean, for this, in order to be able to solve this flawlessly, you need to have some top notch uh, algebraic manipulation skills. So that's, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I can see that there's 20 common and there's pi also that's common. So immediately what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out 20 pi. So when I do that, I have R plus 3.5, the whole thing square, minus r square is equals to 3000, okay? Now, I'm gonna take this 20 pi on the right-hand side and it's gonna get divided by 3000. So what, what do I have now? I have r plus 3.5, the whole thing square, minus r square is equals to 3000 over 20 pi. Now, please, 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 I cannot emphasize enough on this, on what I'm about to say r plus 3.5, the whole thing square, is not r square plus 3.5 squared, okay? You have to use the identity, and what identity am I talking about? I'm talking about a plus b, the whole thing square, which is a square plus 2ab plus b square. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do, r square plus two into r. If you don't wanna do it directly, then don't, okay? If you're not comfortable with doing directly, don't, okay? There's absolutely no uh, necessity uh, for doing that. 3.5 squared is going to be 12.25. Uh, don't ask me how I know this. Yeah, it is 12.25. So 12, actually there's a very simple shortcut to square numbers that end in five. I think I've made a video on it also. Have I? 
I don't know. Anyway, so equals to 3000 over 20 pi. Anyway, so we're almost there, okay? Oh, I forgot one thing, and that is the minus r square. So no worries. So we have the minus r square. So the good thing is that r square and r square get canceled out, which means you don't have to deal with a quadratic equation anymore. So 2 into 3.5 into r is going to be 7r, and this is going to be equal to 3000 over 20 pi minus 12.25. Now, I'm trying to make sure that I have as less decimals or as less non-exact values to deal with. So I can just use my calculator and get the final answer. So 7R, so here's what I'm doing, is equals to 3000 divided by, so I'm doing 3000 divided by 2 pi, sorry, 20 pi. So I'm looking at a value which is 47 point something and from it I'm gonna subtract 12.25. So I have 7R is equal to 35.49 something. Now if I want the value of R, I'm gonna take the final answer and divide it by seven. So answer divided by seven and this turns out to be 5.07. So there you go, R is equals to 5.07, which is the correct answer. Okay, so that was part one. Now as part two, it says solid two is a cone with volume 3000 centimeter cube. The perpendicular height of the cone is twice its radius. So that means that if the radius is R, the perpendicular height H is basically equal to 2R. And what do we have to do? We have to find out that which solid is taller <coughs> Sorry, and by how much? Okay, if you go back to the question, you can see that the formula for calculating the volume of the cone is has already been given to you, which is one over three pi r square h. So volume is equals to one upon three pi r square h. Now the volume of this cone is 3000. Just, just a matter of plugging in the values, okay? This, is a, this particular part at least is very simple. Uh, into r square and in place of h, you have two r. So it's just a matter of cross multiplying, don't forget the pi. So 3,000 into three is 9,000. So let me write that down. 9,000 is equals to two pi r cube, two pi r cube. So let's solve this in our calculator now. 9,000 divided by two pi. So I'm looking at a value which is one, four, three, two something. So r cube is equals to one, four, three, two something. Then let's take the cube root of the answer. So I get r is equals to 11.27. Now don't get carried away. Go back to the question and see what it's asking. It's asking you which solid is taller and by how much. So, so far we've only figured out the radius. With the help of which we're gonna figure out the height. So height of this particular cone was twice its radius. So I'm gonna multiply this value by two and now I have 22.54. So height is 22.5, which means that solid two is taller because if you remember the height of the cylinder I'll write HC was 20 centimeter. And how much is it taller by? So I'm gonna subtract 20 from the height of this cone. So I get 2.54. So 2.54 is 2.55 actually, because it's 2.545. So 2.55 centimeter, and that is the correct answer. Okay, then we have part B, which says, so this question technically covers three very important shapes. One is a cylinder, which sort of is a prism also. Number two is a cone. And number three, a prism again, okay? So cylinder cone prism. So it says the diagram shows a triangular prism of length 24 centimeter. Its cross section is an equilateral triangle with sides eight centimeter, calculate the total surface area of the prism. Now I'm gonna do this through two methods, okay? One is that we're gonna see what or how many shapes a prism is made up of. So this particular prism is gonna have three rectangles and two triangles, okay? So this particular prism, remember, is gonna have three uh, rectangles and two triangles. If you're having trouble visualizing that, I'm gonna try and make that easy for you. Let's go over to this app that I like to use very often. So here we are. So let's go to prisms and let's head over to a triangular prism. Okay, so ignore that it says right triangular prism, but what's important is what do we get when we open it up? So you can see that we get three rectangles, okay, and two, I know they look like squares here, but that's not the point. So you have three rectangles, by the way, every square is also a rectangle, but that's, that's something that we'll talk about later. So we have three rectangles and two triangles in short. All right, now let's go back to our question. We won't have any trouble visualizing now. So three rectangles, and in this case, these three rectangles are gonna be the same. Reason for that is because this is, uh, although a triangular prism, but 
the triangle that we're dealing with here is an equilateral triangle. So excuse my drawing, please, if it does not look top notch. But anyway, you get the point, right? So length is 24, so that means every rectangle here is gonna have 24 as its length. And since we have equilateral triangle with sides eight centimeters, so that means all these sides are eight, eight, and eight. Okay, there's no need to write them, write all of them, but yeah, it's now that I have, let's finish it anyway. Okay, so now if you wanna find out the total surface area, I'm gonna start by calculating the area of the two triangles. So the way to do that would be two into half, into eight, into eight, into sine 60. So this is gonna give me the area of the two triangles. So this one and this one, I'm gonna try and color code it. And then let's find out the area of the three rectangles. So for that, we will do three times, three bracket, 24 times eight. Okay, so let's work this out. So this two and this two gets canceled out. So eight into eight into sine 60. So I'm looking at a certain value plus bracket three into 24 into eight. Okay, so what do you get? You get 631.4, so 631.42. So let's, we can log this at 631. Yeah, so 631.42, but I'm gonna log this at 631, which is the correct answer. Now, the other way of doing this is to use the actual formula of calculating the total surface area of a prism. So that formula is, now, this is the way that I like to use it, 2C, which basically means twice of the area of cross-section plus the perimeter of the cross-section multiplied by the length of the prism, okay? So remember, C stands for the area of cross-section. So here's what I'm gonna do, two and two. Now, cross-section of this particular prism is gonna be the triangle, the equilateral triangle. So half into eight into eight into sine 60. So I have that plus the perimeter of the cross section, which means that eight, eight and eight, so that's 24 multiplied by the length of the prism, which is also 24. So I have a video on prisms, you guys can go check it out. If you work this out, you will notice that you again get the exact same answer, which is 631.4. And either way, you're gonna give your answer correct to three significant figures, which means this is gonna be 631 centimeter square. So yeah. That's, that's about it. Uh, I hope you guys understood this concept. If there's anything that you guys did not understand, so do let me know. I plan to make these videos more often from now on, inshallah. So yeah, hopefully this will benefit you guys for your upcoming exam. So anyway, that's all for this video. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.